In this tutorial, we will take the FreeCAD logo, an SVG file, import it into FreeCAD, extrude and prepare and export it for multicolor 3D printing or multifilament. To start, we need to first download the FreeCAD logo, and this is available from this address. We have the FreeCAD logo here, we click on it, and then the file loads in our browser, and we just need to right click and save as. And then we just pick the directory and save it to that. We can now move over to FreeCAD. I'm using FreeCAD 1.1, but this will be the same in all versions. Let's create a new document. I'll be using the part workbench. And the reason why I'm using FreeCAD's part workbench is because we can keep everything separate. It doesn't automatically fuse our parts together like the part design. We'll get to the part design workflow in another tutorial. Now I'm going to import the SVG. Come out to file and import. Pick the logo and hit open. FreeCAD will ask us how we want it imported. Let's pick SVG as geometry and hit open. I'm going to accept the message regarding the DPI and our logo is added. For this tutorial, we don't want the FreeCAD text. With SVGs, they will always come in on the XY plane as they're a 2D object. If I come up to edit and box selection, I can box select around the text, highlighting all the paths from the original SVG, and I can hit delete on the keyboard. Now we can examine the paths that we have for the logo itself. By showing and hiding the paths, we can see how the SVG was built. Now I can see straight away that this path occupies the same space as this one here. You can see as I hover my mouse over in the tree view, they highlight. This is the setting that can be set in the edit preferences. And we're looking at the general and the selection. In here, you'll find a pre-select the object when hovering the cursor over the tree item. And that one's Chet. So now if I hover over those paths, you can see they pre-select. I can see that this one and this one occupy the same space. As we want to assign different materials to those, we really need those separated out. So let's deal with this one first. I'm going to select it. This is the one I want to keep. Then control select the one we want to remove, which will leave this part here once we've applied the cut. Now, because they're non-solids, they're just shapes in FreeCAD at the moment, we get this warning. We hit yes. You can see now we've got this part here, this single cut, but we've lost the outside. Embedded in the cut, you'll find the original paths. Now I can click on one and press the space bar or use the eye icon and that shows the original path. That's not the one I want. I want the one that occupies this space so I can show that one. And now I've got all parts of the puzzle. The trouble is, is the path is embedded in the cut. This is okay at this nested level, but it can be easily missed if this was embedded deep into the tree as in multiple cuts and multiple unions. FreeCAD does offer a tool to solve this. And that's the link tool available in the standard toolbar. The link tool in FreeCAD lets you create a shortcut to bring in an existing object, such as a shape or body, into your current design while keeping it connected to the original. You can do the usual such as move, edit it, or using operations such as booleans, whilst keeping the source untouched. This makes it quite handy for complex projects so if you've got something that's nested deep in a tree that you want to bring to the surface, then we can use a link tool. So to demonstrate this, we'll select the path and then select the link tool. And you notice it's pulled it out of the tree up to the top level and it has a link to the original object, the path 001. So now we can rename our paths just to make it easier. I've given them all simple names as shown. So now we have all our paths that we need. Let's do a quick spot check. We have the bottom path, the F path, the middle cut, and the link. The link was pulled from the middle cut. The one thing to check if we come into the middle cut is to check 
that its contents are all invisible. At the moment, this path 001 is visible. So if we start selecting from here, we may get the top path or the path 001, depending on the order they appear. Let's make sure we hide that path. That means we always select link. I want to add something to this design. I'm going to create a border around the outside and assign it a different filament color. There are many ways of doing that. We could use the part and the shape builder and create wires from edges, but they won't go across multiple shapes. And even if we do this, we need to downgrade these wires to remove certain edges. FreeCAD offers up a draft workbench gives you a number of 2D drafting tools to make this easier. I'm going to create a face binder between all these paths. They are faces. And select one, hold down control, and select all the others. And combine them into one face binder. And select our paths, hold down the shift because they're all in line, and press the space bar on the keyboard those so we just got our face binder I can now take that face binder and downgrade that to different shapes let's come up to modifications and downgrade we've downgraded it to a number of faces notice we've lost the original face binder but this is the reason why this wasn't performed on these here now coming to think about this we don't need this F in here we just need the outline going around the outside I'm going to click on that and hit delete on the keyboard. We now have a void in here. Next, we'll take each of these faces and repeat the process. Modifications, downgrade, downgrades it to wire, or we could use the tool on the toolbar, downward arrow. But each of these have to be a wires. Now, if I control select both of these and try to do this, we get a different type of object. Hit Control Z, undo that. So we have to do this one by one. One more. So we have our wires, but we still can't delete edges. Let's take one wire and downgrade it once more. Use the shortcut key if you wanted to. Now we have a number of edges. Let's repeat with the other wires. Our wires have disappeared and we just have the edges. Now I can start deleting the edges from within here. Come up to edit and we'll use a box selection and I'm going to box select around the F. The edges of that F have been selected, except for this one here. I can hold down control and add to that and hit delete on the keyboard. We have the edges here. I'm going to delete those. There'll be two. Remember we had half this side, half this side. So when we select this edge and hit delete, there's going to be another one underneath it. So we're cleaning up the geometry to make an outline. Next, we need to box select the whole lot or shift select from the tree view and we need to upgrade this come up to modifications and upgrade this will upgrade it back to a wire so now we can offset this but there's one more step this wire needs to be closed there are a number of ways of checking for this let's come over to the part workbench once again let the wire and create an extrude so this is going to be a test extrude. We're extruding it along its normal. Now, if it hasn't got a normal, we need to select the normal with the Z. So we can just click that and that'll set the custom direction. I'm just going to go along normal to see if it has, which it has got a normal, but it's extruded it as basically a shell. If we look at the extrude, if we look at the solid, it's no. If I check that, we get the error, why not closed? So we need to fix this. We'll delete the extrude, show the original wire, 
and come over to the draft workbench. Take the wire, modifications, and then come down to draft to sketch. The wire is still visible. Let's hide the wire. And now we can double click on the sketch, find out what's going wrong. And straight away, I can see some problems in here. Now I'm looking for these red points, which mean they're coincident. But we can see here, we have a point on this line. And if I hover over this line, we can see that I haven't removed this line in here. This point here, if I pull this down, we've got another line over the top here. I need to take that and hit delete. So easily missed. And the same for this one. If I hover over this line, you can see the line goes straight through this black point. Points that are not red are not coincident. So depending on your color scheme, it will either be black or white. In this case, because we've got the light color scheme, it's actually black. So hover over that point and drag it. I can see we have a line. Click it and delete. The same for this one. And this one's okay. It's just not connected. It controls Z on the keyboard to undo it and then click and hold and create a box selection around those two points. And then we create a coincident constraint. And let's hit close. Let's come over to the part workbench and extrude this and hit OK. We get a solid extrude. The extrude is just for a test. Make sure everything works. Let's click on the extrude and hit delete. The sketch is invisible. We'll show that. So we want to make an outline. At the moment, this is no good because it just sits in the space of the FreeCAD logo. In the part workbench, we have the 2D offset. We're going to select the sketch, part to part, and come down to 2D offset. This offsets our geometry. On the left here, we have the amount that we can offset by. We can increase that. If we start seeing breaks in here, then we can use the intersection. But as you can see, I'm fine. So that's add something like a four millimeter offset and hit okay. On the left hand side, we have the offset 2D. Now within here, we also have the original sketch, which I'm going to hide. If we click on the offset and come down to the fill and fill the offset, we have our border going around the outside. Let's rename the offset and collapse it in the tree view. The wire stays hidden and we show all the parts of our project. So now we have them all divided out, ready to be extruded. To extrude, we don't need to extrude these individually. Let one, hold down the control key and work your way through preview. Let's add the extrude. We may have to set the direction. I'm going to keep it to 10 millimeters and hit okay. We cannot determine normal vector. So we need to set the direction in the Z direction. Click it again, it goes in the plus, minus, and hit OK. If it goes the wrong way, then we can come into the individual extrudes, just select them, and change the forward or the direction, and that will apply it to all of them. Now we have our individual parts. I'm going to add a part container and select the extrudes, just select them and drag them into the part container. The reason why I've done this is that we can take the part container and hide the visibility and export the part container as one. File and export. I'm going to be exporting as 3MF, but I'm also going to be exporting as STL. The reason why I'm doing that is to show you the different processes. There may be a bug in the 3MF export. If you export as STL, the process is slightly different. Let's pick 3MF and save that. Come to File and Export. We'll also export it as STL just to show those differences. You don't have to do this. And Part STL. Also note you can compound these together and export them as one. There may be a bug in the 3MF export where parts of compounds are merged together. 
We'll now open the slicer and import these files and understand how we'll deal with them in the slicer. I'm using the AnyCubit Next slicer, but this is going to be the same process in say Orca slicer or Prusa slicer, just going to be located in a different location. First, let's import our STL file, import, and we pick the STL. Now, when we open the STL, if we look at the objects, we have one object in here, which we need to right click on, split into parts. We'll now get multiple parts for each of the individual parts of the model, which is what we want. If we try to move this, it moves as one part. I'm just going to delete that now and come up to file and import. And this time we'll import the FreeMF and hit open. Notice something different. It's come in as the individual objects themselves. We get this warning to say it's too close. The other import we didn't. We can ignore this because we've set it up correctly in FreeCAD. When we get to the slice plate or we slice the model, then if we have any problems, we'll get a warning in this screen. Let's go back to the prepare. One last thing to remember with this process is that if I click and drag, they become separated. They're objects and not parts. We need to be careful with that. Just hit Control Z on the keyboard. The coloring process is the same, whether we're using parts or objects. It's just a case of right clicking and then changing the filament to whichever color we want. We can go through and change the filaments. I've only got or set up here, and we can pick the colors that we need. Once we're happy, we can hit slice. We don't have any collision errors, and we're all ready to go. So that's a simple tutorial of how to do multi-filament or multi-color prints using FreeCAD and preparing it in your slicer. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.